Hey there guys and welcome to another episode of Evident Design. I just reached 30,000 subscribers, which is really awesome, so I wanted to do something a bit special. A full walkthrough of a personal painting. So thank you so much for subscribing and for all your support, and I really hope that you're learning cool stuff. Uh, you guys are awesome. So in this video, we're going to be creating this painting that you see right here in front of you. It's a personal painting uh, of this ancient Viking-inspired ship in rough seas among these uh, cliffs that apparently are magical. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Um, I haven't used any photos in this painting, only the texture brushes that come with the Evident brush pack. You can find a download link in the description, it's free. Uh, the whole painting took about two and a half hours. So let's just jump right in. All right, so um, I'm starting off with 2700 by 1500 pixels. And I already know what I wanted to do. So um, I just start with, uh, you know, blocking in the, the, the colors. I know that I want to have um, a sea here and the ship and stuff. So I'm just doing like the, the basic coloring in of the, of, the, um, uh, of the ocean. It's like a half muted blue color with some turquoise, uh, turquoise uh, cyan and I have a different layer now which is layer one where I'm just gonna have sort of the foreground uh, the foreground C and I'm using a general really regular uh, soft round brush to just you know make the shapes it's very important to really get the shapes in first and then I make uh, another layer which is uh, for the tsunami it's a bit brighter color this time a bit less um, saturated too um, and it has this like imp imposing feel f to it it's really rising up maybe like I don't know three four hundred meters or something um, and I'm just figuring out like the the placements and stuff of the um, of this painting I, I have a pretty good idea in my head already how it looks but then it's all about experimentation and seeing what works best Just adding in a few, a few different layers here, uh, on top of the, on top of the water. So I see painting water in in three layers when it comes to these big rough waves, and that's the f the, the first step is is that um, I have just the standard color like basic uh, blocking in, and the shape of the waves, and then the second one is actually uh, where the light is coming from. So I make some part brighter and some part darker. And then the third part is the foam, and that's all the white stuff that you see there. So um, it's just about layering until you achieve that sort of water, the, the wave, the wave feel, the wave look. And now I just made a different, an extra layer here. This is for the the rocks. Thinking about having these re really vertical rocks, I think that looks pretty cool. And it lies between the the waves in front and then the wave in the background there. Sometimes I don't work with several layers, but when I want to make a little bit more effort, you know, when I want to bring in some more details and I want to have more control, I really like to have a few layers then, like mid, mid ground, background and foreground, and sometimes a few extra stuff. And you can see that I'm just using the regular technique that I usually use for, for rocks and mountains. Here, just playing around with the, f the free transform, the warp tool. And I'm always looking up in the navigator. That's really important to get an overview of your composition. And I also flip the canvas front and back to, to check if the composition looks pretty good or, or if I find some errors or something like that. Get a fresh look on things. And you can see that I'm using the um, lock transparent pixels. So I, I don't paint outside where, wherever I painted before. So now I just removed it so I can paint outside to reshape uh, the form of, of the rocks. Here I'm just making a new layer and um, 
uh, I want to block in the um, uh, the ship, the Viking ship. So I'm using a very dark, pretty much black color to get the silhouette right. I usually like to do that when it comes to uh, vessels and also people actually. Here's the mast and I'm trying to figure out where to put the the boom and all the you know the, the placements of the sails. And I wanted to have like a really interesting color on the sails. Uh, I end up actually using just pure um, like purple, but this is more of a, a, a red one, which I think is pretty cool too. Just making some, you know, fancy uh, sail configurations. Just taking inspiration from my own sailboat and also from like actual Viking ships and and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty cool to just get your inspiration sources from wherever you can. So adding in a few lines, that really helps to sell the, the whole idea. Reshaping it, testing out a few things. That's pretty cool when you have layers like this. <laughs> you can really test and, sh and reshape and do whatever you want to get the really cool um, result that you want. This would be way harder if I didn't have any layers. Just refining a bit. And I, I like to jump between different, uh, different parts of the painting so um, it doesn't get too monotone for me to just, you know, paint. And I get a fresh, you know, I can relax my eyes and um, work on something else. And relax my brain as well. Like I don't have to think about just one thing all the time. So I can jump, you know, from the ship back to the rocks, let it um, cool down a bit for the ship, and then I can go back to the ship later. Just adding some three dimensionality to it, having some more dark, uh, rounded edges, blocky feel. I thought it looked too flat. Changing around with color balance, it should be a little bit more green, I think. Seas like these are pretty green, like they're not really blue in storms. With some overcast. And actually, as you saw in the in the finished picture in the beginning there, you saw that I actually had some, um, some lighting up there, like uh, it's in the sunset. And I didn't know that I wanted that, but... Uh, I just try it out in the end, and I actually think that it it works really well. But for now, I'm just doing the whole um, like the forms and how things are moving in the sea, and it's all like an overcast day, so it it could work actually like this as well. I thought this looks really cool too, but yeah, I wanted to have a bit more dra dramatic lighting. I really like that, and now I'm using the smudge tool. I think that's a really good tool to use. You can try different brushes with a smudge tool. And I also, I also another thing that's really important is to uh, break up your usage of hard, hard shapes and soft shapes. And you can see that I'm switching between the, the soft round brush and texture brushes and then just regular normal hard round brush. Just to get some parts where it's like really blurry big strokes and then some parts where it's uh, it's really hard but for for the ship here it's like mostly um, mostly hard you can see I'm doing the the planks now just some ornaments in the front there trying out some designs I wanted to spend a bit more time on this but I didn't for some reason Just color dodging, giving it a bit, a little bit more punch, so it sticks out a bit more. And this is some sort of metal. Maybe it's like bronze or something that's um, or silver, not silver, but like iron. But it looks a bit too uh, 
to brown right now. I'm going to change it later. Here I thought uh, it would be cool to have a more diagonal boom. I thought that would contrast everything a bit more and um, follow the lines of the sea and stuff. And have an extra boom here. <laughs> I uh, just darkened the sails and the whole thing in front there because um, it looks more imposing that way. I wanted to try a bit more sails here to make it look a bit more interesting. A bit brighter color. Using the soft brush to get a more, uh, with the smudge, to get more of a, um, a cloth feel. Then just painting over. Some wrinkles in the sails. I have this sort of bad habit where I don't um, spend too much time on stuff. I really like to just uh, spend, focus my time on the most important things and then just leave them. But I, sh I should spend more time. Like on the sails, I would have um, spent a bit more time on that. I mean, if it was a if it wasn't a personal painting, I would I would do that. If it was for a client, like for example, using the lasso um, and the lock transparent pixels, so it doesn't paint outside. And the composition is sort of taking shape now. I have all the um, the sails up and. Um, the waves where I want want them, and also the 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 mountains there, those cliffs. The last was really great. Here, I'm just making it a bit more three dimensional, using brighter colors and darker colors, and just pushing out some values. The silhouette is really important, so um, adding stuff on the outside is really, really good. Like small lines that stick out and um, things like that. It really helps sell the whole thing, that it's like one piece. And I've been getting a few questions where it's like, what 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 colors should I use, you know? Um, but I mean, it's, it's all about practice, you know. You, you get you get used to that when once you practice, um, you know what what colors work with each other. Um, and um, like right, right now, you can see that most of the colors here are um, like blue, green, and turquoise. And then you have the sails, which are red, and the ship, and those are actually pretty complementary colors. But I'm not using like really saturated colors here. Oh yeah, you can see here I'm just um, warping everything. Maybe I could find a cooler uh, composition. But yeah, the colors. Um, so I'm, I'm not using really hard, like for example, if, if I'm using a lot of uh, really bright uh, and saturated blues, I'm not really using any really saturated reds. I'm gonna use a bit more muted ones because uh, if I use two saturated uh, complementary colors, it would kind of clash together and it would kind of hurt the eyes. So um, even if I just use gray with a mostly blue, blue-green uh, setting, it would still look a, a little bit red. So I can maybe do a video about that. Or I should definitely do a video about that, uh, about sort of color theory and how to think about that. But it really comes with practice and uh, looking at paintings and studies. but mostly just practicing yourself, seeing what works. Here I'm just smudging up some things, getting rid of too much um, um, bland, you know, like everything is just rigid. The smudge tool can really bring out some more uh, motion, some flow. And I love to experiment with rocks because 
they can look so different and you know, so interesting. So I just decided to go with what I had before, which is okay. Yeah, decent separation between the water and the rocks, and also the same thing behind there. Just removing a lot of this white stuff up there, because I thought that was a bit too much. I mean, the wave is really far away and really big, so it was a bit unnatural to have that huge white stuff. I think this looks much better. And a little bit brighter, too, on the, on the crests. And same thing for the foreground. Wanted to make the foam pop a little bit more. And when it comes to painting these, like, waves and stuff, um, I mean, water looks so... It, it really bends lights in all kinds of ways. And um, I'm just thinking in terms of layers and how things reflect. So I'm not using any crazy colors or crazy reflections or anything. I'm just using what I have right there, the blue, the green, and um, some of the sky color for these um, soft reflections. And just trying to build up in terms of layers. Like first the, the general form, and then the lighting, and then the, the foam on top. And that, that's how you get um, these uh, waves. Just adding some splash here, splashes. And some spray too, sea spray. Shouldn't go too crazy with those. And this is the third layer that you see here. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my phone. Just darkening up a little bit. Um, and the wave is gonna be brightest on top there, so I actually just uh, brighten it up a little bit more with some more color, some more green color. It really makes it look like a, an actual wave, pretty realistic. Blurring up things, smudging them. And at any point in this whole painting, I can just change up things. I can even remove the entire tsunami there in the background. I thought that actually looked pretty cool, uh, just not, not having a tsunami at all. But um, yeah, I wanted to stick to my original idea. But you can just try out any kinds of ideas that you have. Um, it doesn't really matter if you, um, if you deviate from your original idea. And that's what's so important with getting stuff done early, like getting all these important um, composition things early, before you start rendering out too much. But even now, even if I've rendered quite a lot of this mountain, you can see that I'm, I can just move it around and start experimenting with it. Yeah, just trying out a few different things here. I thought that was pretty cool too, actually. Sort of guides the eye down. Um, but, I don't know, it got a bit... I don't know, I thought this was cool too. Sometimes several composition works. Using the lasso and getting some more atmospheric effects, like there's clouds behind there, that really makes it pop a bit more. Adding some clouds. cool sometimes to try out some some perspective things like the clouds are moving in perspective down downwards um, 
That would look really cool too. <clears throat> These are some cloud brushes, doing a few different things, making some more atmosphere in this painting. I could also have added more like rain and more crazy weather stuff, but yeah, it works as it is too. And as usual, I, I really overdo <laughs> the clouds, but um, yeah, it's not too bad. Just using the, the different values here that I have already in my painting to get some more uh, texture to the rocks. And they're very gray, like almost 100% gray. A little bit blue too. And some diagonals. I think that looks cool. Diagonals are part of um, a triangle <clears throat> and in shape language. Um, triangles are pretty like rough and aggressive. I'm gonna make a video about that too. But maybe you're watching this in a year or two years or even more and I already have made them so. <laughs> Just uh, changing around the different uh, directions of the brush and Sometimes even the size, that's really cool. I mean, you can just play around. There's so much cool things you can do in Photoshop. I guess this is a good time to mention that I'm working right now on my course, uh, the Aspiring Concept Artist. And it's not out yet, but um, I've come pretty far. And I'm just um, creating all the lectures and everything for you guys to, um, yeah, I want to, I want to make a really in-depth course in uh, concept art taking all the way from all the fundamentals and explaining things um, to specific techniques on how to paint uh, rocks and more in-depth more in-depth stuff than I do here on this channel. And also, um, we're going to be creating a pretty cool project in that course. And it's going to be an online course, so you can take it at your own leisure. And I'm going to release it this year. Just need to finish it first. I think it's going to be a, a really good course for, for you guys. Because in in, uh, in, the, in the YouTube channel uh, that you're watching this right now, uh, I'm just I just want to to give you guys some you know free stuff to give you some pretty good pretty good um, uh, information, pretty good knowledge that you can just use without having to pay anything. But uh, I also want people to be able to get some more in-depth knowledge from me. And if I have if if I can do that, that that's awesome. Um, it's just that it takes it takes me a lot of time, and um, I also have to, you know, live. So it's um, it's like having a private tutor, but instead you get a really really cool in depth uh, course. I'm I'm not gonna continue. Uh, I'm not gonna quit making these videos. Of course, I'm gonna continue uploading free stuff, so you guys can enjoy that too. But I'm also gonna make some more in depth things, so you can uh, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I'm just playing around with the perspective of the ship. I just try, thought about using one of my brushes and warping it to fit some more foam, um, more reflections and stuff. I think the warp tool is really cool. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to use, but uh, most of the time it's really awesome. Just to reduce the opacity, erase some things. And I thought that kind of blended everything together a bit more. And I'm doing that here too as well. Perspective. And that works really well as well. Color balancing. It needs to be a bit darker up front here, and I wanted to, the um, 
the foam to be a little bit more red. If everything's too blue, uh, it's, it's not going to be any interesting um, thing to look at in terms of color and uh, color scheme. Adding some more motion with the um, smudge tool. It's so versatile using the smudge tool. You can do so many things with it. Uh, you know, clothing, mm, adding some motion in, in water and clouds, and rain, and all kinds of cool stuff. Blending, you know, making things look more blended. And as you can see, I, I really don't like to zoom in too much because then I lose the scope of the entire painting. I like to work a little bit more um, zoomed out. And now you can see I, I zoomed in a little bit more, but it's usually not more than that. Unless it's like when, I, when I've worked a few hours on this and I really want to go in depth into something and, um, you know, fix it up. Then I'm going to zoom in and really add some more details and render it out when everything is done in terms of composition. Because you see I'm still ch changing around a lot of things and if I add too many details and I'm going too much, um, there's a big chance that all those things are gonna get erased and I don't wanna commit that much. So I'm just doing the cool stuff right now and the, the, the overall shapes and stuff right now. And then later on I can just uh, render it out when I know that it's all good. Adding some more green here. Mostly here among the ship, because that's, that's going to attract the eye a bit more. Where it's a little bit more uh, color. Some birds. <laughs> Not really sure if I wanted to have white birds or dark birds, but I think this scene actually works better with, uh, with black birds. Just experimenting a bit on its own layer, of course. And actually, you can do both. You can do both black and white. But that works better when you have um, some more lighting. Like the, white, the, the birds are white in the, in the light, and then they're black or dark in the, in the shadows. Just adding some more birds here up front. It looks too happy, I think, with these white, white birds. <laughs> so it needs to be more Viking, and I just invert everything and make it, make it dark. I think that works really cool. Just adding a little bit of blur to the background background elements. That's going to make a few things in the front pop a little bit more and be a bit more in focus, but not too much. Otherwise, you're going to get this macro effect, which looks like everything is really small. Also, a little bit of a blur tool. So I really appreciate what you guys um, when you guys say what you want to learn more, and um, I really appreciate I really uh, encourage you guys to do that more. Just let me know what you want to learn more, um, questions you have, and I'll try to answer them e e uh, either in the um, um, the comments or maybe in a, in, a, in another video, or maybe you make a, a whole video about that subject that you want to learn more about. I'm really open to suggestions and comments and whatnot. Just doing some lighting here on the sails, refining them a bit. And like I said before, I, I like to switch up the shapes. Um, and the brushes that I use, so I don't only have like hard edges. 
I also have like soft edges. So the eye can actually like go to some place and rest a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to always look at really focused, uh, really detailed things. Like I thought that, that was too messy, so I just painted over it and just added a little bit more simple, uh, simple lines there. I thought that worked way better. And they're all pointing towards the ship, so... Some lighting there. Color dodge and lighten. Lighten actually makes all the levels that are darker than the color you have. They make them brighter, but if you use like this green on white, for example, it's not gonna make it green. It's only gonna lighten whatever is darker than it itself. And it's vice versa for the, the dark and um, uh, brush brush style. That's also a video I'm gonna do, uh, Photoshop Essentials. It's gonna be part of the course. Uh, it's gonna be more in depth there, but I thought maybe I could do like a free course on just that. That's something people really, uh, really want. Because Photoshop is so big and it's, you can use so many things in it and there's so many techniques. It's really important to, to learn it, I think. Maybe you're not even, even using Photoshop, um, which I have no idea why, because Photoshop is like the best thing ever. Um, you can do so many things in it. And there are so many tutorials out there on specifically Photoshop. And I, it doesn't really cost that much. I mean, it's maybe, I think it's about like 10 or 15 uh, bucks every every month for the cloud, which I think is really affordable. Just doing like a crow or something, a crow head. Or I have no idea what that is. <laughs> uh, some pagan, pagan thing. But the general shape language is there. Uh, these circular mixed with um, the angular stuff. It's pretty Viking. I actually saw a really cool Viking ship here outside in, um, in my harbor in Sweden. In Gothenburg, I was sailing out there and I saw this uh, red, red and white stri striped ship. It was really cool. It's uh, one of the old Viking ships that they have out here. Of course, not the original ones, but uh, the replicas, and they work. It's really cool to to look at them with the uh, binoculars <laughs> and get inspired more. Just adding some texture, a little bit of texture. That breaks it up a little bit, makes it a little bit less di dig digital. Just adds some, you know, uh, some noise to it. And as you can see, I haven't really saved yet, which is really stupid. Uh, I should really save um, as soon as you have, like, this is way too far to not have saved. I've already worked about one and a half hours on this. Um, but uh, I save soon enough. <laughs> Here I thought about making some fire from, from the bird mouth. I thought that would be pretty cool. And since it's not, st not too close to the sails, um, it's all right. <laughs> so the sails don't catch fire. <laughs> but I, I guess these Vikings know what they're doing. Maybe changing up the, the forms, getting a different flow, but it was pretty cool as it was before, I think, like that. 
looks really intimidating when you if you see something like this coming up to your shore. Oh man. <laughs> Brightening it up a few edges, making it look more like metal. But I thought it was too much. It's not doesn't really fit the whole scene. Yeah, I'm just gonna add some reflections. Some ambient light from the actual uh, from the fire. Some shadows there. Uh, the sail in front there is casting a shadow on the sail behind. Small things like that really adds to the whole, uh, to the whole uh, real realism. So it's good to think a little bit more about how light is actually being cast and where it hits. Just do it using the um, use the lock transparent pixels, and you can paint right on there, on the small lines there. Just making things darker, a multiply layer on top of, of everything, getting a little bit of a vignette, vignette. And here I got the idea of making the uh, the magical. Magical stuff, shining stuff from the mountain. I had some similar things in my matte painting tutorial. Maybe I should move on from that concept. <laughs> but yeah, I think it looks pretty cool too. Maybe there's like warlocks and stuff there. About to be crushed by a wave. That's 500 meter. And there I just saved. Trying out some different colors. I thought green looked really cool, but then it was a bit too much uh, Game of Thrones when they're um, with the wildfire. And it's funny that I get so many comments that I look like Oberyn Martell. It's really crazy when I saw it first time as well. And when I saw him in the show, <laughs> I'm like, wait, that's me. <laughs> that was really funny. I actually read the books way, way back. And then the show came out. And I've waited like six years for the book to come out too. So the last one, I mean the, the next last one. But what can you do? Just continuing on that layer. Actually, I'm just painting right on there because I think that I'm going to have that anyway. Here I'm just adding something. Maybe it's like, uh, it's like, like a warlock thing up there, but... I decided to take that away. <laughs> I thought that was too much. It led the eye on the on a different way that I wanted originally. I want people to look at the um, the ship and then the wave, and then finally the the rocks. Desaturating it a little bit more everything so it doesn't look too uh, comic book and I changed the colors of the sails to be more purple more like Tyrian purple like the um, Phoenicians they are uh, they used to crush snails from the sea um, and you would get these this purple dye that like the Roman emperors and stuff would have and they also dyed their sails in this Tyrian purple. Back in, I think it was like 1300 before Christ, up to 500 or something. It's pretty cool to check out history and stuff. You can get so much inspiration from it. I'm reading a book now, it's really good. It's called um, uh, Guns, Germs and Steel. It's like the, the history of, of humanity, I guess. And then why some civilizations... Um, uh, conquer other civilizations. Get a lot of inspiration from that too. Here I'm just using the the, uh, the clone stamp. I painted this sort of rivet thing. I'm just copying it here and there. It's a quick and easy way. You can do that with armor too and like characters. 
and weapons and all kinds of stuff. Adding in some people. Some people are like holding on for their lives because <laughs> there's a huge tsunami in the background. Just adding some more separation here. Separate the um, sails a bit more. Making it a little bit less dark, like not completely black. That's a trick you can do, lighten up the, the base of something. It makes it look pretty big when it comes to uh, landscapes. Just darkening the sky a bit more. That also makes it look really big and ominous. So you can see it's starting to really um, get finished. I mean, we're soon finished with this one. And if this was for a client that wanted like a really, really nice rendered image, I would spend maybe uh, three times the the time I spent on this right now, maybe like eight or nine hours or even up to 15 or 20 hours if, if it's if it's like really gonna be really rendered out. But this was just a personal painting and it took about two and a half hours. Um, but it doesn't really matter how long things take as long as you as long as you're happy with what you've, you're doing um, and it serves the purpose. It's all good. Now I'm actually adding the linear dodge uh, layer here with the linear dodge on both the layer style and the brush style. Just adding some, uh, some of um, the lighting is hitting, the, the sun is hitting the, the mountains, coming through the wave there. And then it's actually shining a little bit more through the, through the wave itself, making it look this bright green. I thought that was really cool, a dramatic effect to it. Trying out in the very last part here. It looks pretty cool too, I think, having this um, more open thing. But I decided to not do that. <laughs> Just go back. Also, if this was for a client, I would maybe have used even some more photos. Uh, that will speed things up and it also makes things look really realistic, obviously. But you can do that in the, in the very end using the photos. Doing a new layer, um, painting over, and then just erasing where I don't want the texture to be. I thought that added a lot. Because that's sort of a focal point there. People will look there. Just, just adjusting the ship a little bit more. It really needs to stick out. Some final color adjustments on top of everything. I just stamped everything down. Adding some noise, some Gaussian blur. And yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I just uh, changed up a little bit of things, uh, made, made it a little bit less vertical, um, squeezed it down a little bit, but um, yeah, 
overall, it's a finished painting, I think. It's uh, good enough to, you know, post online and have as a little portfolio piece, I guess, or just not even that, actually. Um, for me, I'd like, like, I'd like to spend more time on it to make it portfolio, to make it in my portfolio. But yeah, it's it's a finished painting and I'm happy with it. With it. Uh, I got the idea across. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something cool. Um, if you have any ideas or suggestions or whatever, if you want to tell me something, <laughs> uh, just let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. All right, guys. See ya.